Thank you, Alan. <clears throat> that was wonderful. Um, just a short announcement here. Um, this year, our award gala would be held with dinner and dance. Um, dinner and dance idea came from who tells me that poets don't know how to dance and how to have fun? <laughs> they definitely do because um, I went to Istanbul and a while ago I was in uh, Italy uh, to read my poetry and there was just so much of fun. One day of poetry after that dinner and dance. And I guarantee you this would be one of the best events. There would be appetizers and fusion dinner and after that, uh, sweet dishes and uh, dinner and dance, good music and DJ. I have given you tickets to most of you. Um, check your schedule and um, let me know um, that the ticket is just $30 per person. But anyhow, after that, now I invite uh, Bonnie Quan Simmons to come and read her poetry. I would like to read tonight. The first two poems are from my new chapbook. The first one's called Grandma May, My Guardian Angel. And last year when we had this event, it was her 10th death anniversary. So on Monday will be her 11th anniversary. Grandma May, My Guardian Angel. Last night, after I asked for comfort from my late Grandma May, she appeared. My estranged husband and our son accompany me to her Calgary home. She sat on her living room floor, slightly hunched over, but when she stood up in front of her TV, she was a strong, healthy woman I remembered. Then my husband's two cell phones rang, his regular and his secret one. When I grabbed his secret phone, he reached to grab my arm to hurt me, but stopped because of my grandma's presence. I dropped his phone, into her water-filled kitchen sink. <laughs> and this one's called Stargazer Lilies. My spray of lilies, you symbolize my wedding day flower of two decades ago, when my son told me that his dad, my not-quite ex, had brought his mistress along to Swiss Chalet to join he and his grandpa for dinner. I was glad I had spent the day with my love. YVR Fairmont Hotel for afternoon tea, dinner at his brother's home. Despite my soon-to-be ex's insensitive behavior, I focused on the positive. As I medicated myself to sleep, my lily scent infused the air. And this poem is a little bit of a show-and-tell poem. It's about the power of spiritual objects. And I have these objects here with me, which my poem is about. And it's um, my spiritual pouch. Spiritual pouch. Mauve floral print organza pouch contains a silver cross necklace from a childhood friend to protect from evil, dry petals from roses given by my lover, a delicate necklace of purple and clear beads from a fellow poet, Amethyst stones necklace to protect from poison. A lavender sachet from Paris. A plumeria painted purple and clear beaded bracelet from Maui, a souvenir from my mother. And three pages of affirmations from friends, acquaintances, and family, tied with fuchsia too. I brought this pouch to two disciplinary work meetings last October and a work meeting this March. It's a pretty powerful pouch. It goes everywhere I go um, when I'm feeling I need some strength. And the second last poem is about my memories of Paris and remembering those who had lost their lives there last November. And it's called Paris with Paulo. I'll always have Paris, city of love and light. Despite our more than half day of air travel, Paulo navigated the metro, the RER from Charles de Gaulle, then the Chatelet metro station, a monstrous maze of corridors, multiple levels of stairs, 
where five lines meet. Their lack of elevators, broken down escalators, forced us to carry our luggage to Goncourt Station street level in August. We, we visited museums, Champs-de-Lézées, elevated to the summit of Arc de Triomphe, La Tour Eiffel, shocked at Marchais, walked through three 17th century gar gardens, shared oysters, cheese, charcuterie, baguettes, patisseries. We lived like Parisians, rented an apartment just minutes walk from a patisserie, fromagerie, boucherie, a monoprix, shops, cafes. We could walk to Canal St. Martin, the Republic, not far from the Bataclan, where two months later, 89 died, victims of terrorism. I will remember Paris. And this final poem is called Metamorphosis, and it's a dream poem. I was with John, the recently re reunited husband of an acquaintance. They had separated twice. I was making out with John. We were at a retreat place where Leisha Rosno was one of the two leaders. I got my 11 chili noodles packed to go. John and I stayed for the meeting. I was adjusting an open screen window when Lex Leslie got angry and said, I was making it cold inside. I replied, the screens were already letting in cold air. A baby elephant popped his head through an open window, flipped over the window's wooden post, climbed through, landed in the middle of the room, morphed into a small gray bear wearing glasses, posed for a photo. <laughs> I used a sheet of paper to snap photos. I morphed into John, drove an all-terrain vehicle, ATV, along narrow highways <coughs> through dense clouds down a mountainside. My ATV came to a stop at the edge of the ravine. I worried. Would I remember my way back on my own? to get home. Thank you.